Good morning. Here's a special bulletin from the Angry Astronaut. As most of you know, a few days ago, I dared to be optimistic about the future of Peregrine. Against all odds, Astrobotic had managed to restore complete operative status to the probe in spite of all the damage that it had sustained. But unfortunately, the most important part of the probe's operative function, that is to say its propulsion system, remains for the most part completely inoperable. There's just a very unhealthy mix of oxidizer and propellant as a result of the leak that took place, making it impossible to operate the ship's thrusters properly. And of course, a great deal of oxidizer has been lost in the leak as well. There is no chance whatsoever for this thing to land on the moon, at least safely, and the ill-fated lander's current trajectory will put it into the Earth's atmosphere sometime on the 18th. At least that is what is projected at this point. As of right now, Peregrine has been operable for nine days. It's responsive, it's operational, it's stable, and many of its payloads are in communication with the Earth. Why then does Astrobotic not just simply allow this spacecraft to continue on a different course? According to Astrobotic, they could change the trajectory slightly and avoid hitting the atmosphere and just let the thing head out into deep space or perhaps try to crash it into the moon at least. Well, here's the major problem. Vulcan Centaur put Peregrine into a trajectory that was designed to intercept cislunar space. So in other words, this probe is not on a trajectory that's going to take it away from the Earth, but rather on a long elliptical orbit in relation to both the Moon and the Earth. It essentially would become a near-Earth asteroid of sorts if it was simply allowed to continue on its journey and be left to its own devices. Peregrine does not have enough fuel left to implement any sort of significant changes to this current trajectory. Yeah, they might be able to miss the Earth, but then Peregrine would continue to fly virtually uncontrolled through orbits that are used by satellites and geosynchronous orbit, low Earth orbit, etc., and would also be flying through cislunar space. They probably couldn't even make significant enough changes to the current trajectory to smash it into the moon. That being the case then, Astrobotic doesn't want this vehicle to become a hazard to future traffic heading to the moon, or perhaps a hazard that will smash into one of our satellites, creating even more space junk. Therefore, they feel that the most responsible thing to do is to let it burn up now that they were fortunate enough to put it on a trajectory that's going to put it into Earth's atmosphere. They have an opportunity now to dispose of Peregrine before it can cause any more trouble. And even though this is incredibly disappointing, and even though I feel that Peregrine Peregrine could carry out some very useful and important science even though it would be remaining in interplanetary space. It is, regrettably, the most responsible decision to let Peregrine burn up in the atmosphere now rather than have to deal with it as a hazard in the future. Astrobotic has demonstrated some incredible capabilities in keeping this thing operable for as long as they have, and also they have demonstrated incredible transparency with the mission. They have been so open about their communication with the public very, very impressive, really. Most other space companies do not share information so freely. Astrobotic has set an excellent precedent here, and I hope that other companies choose to follow it. In the meantime, there is another mission about to set down on the moon soon. The JAXA Slim Lander will be setting down within the next few days. January 20th is its projected landing date, and I hope to be bringing you details about all of that soon. In addition, Astrobotic was generous enough to allow me to be part of their NASA press event on January the 18th, in other words, tomorrow, and I'll be bringing you all the details of what they have to say about the mission, about the various payload performances, and everything they were able to gain out of this spacecraft on its ill-fated journey. 
And even though this mission was a disappointment, and even though Peregrine obviously did not deliver the results we were hoping for, I think it's important to bear in mind that Astrobotic managed to keep this thing operating for a couple of weeks when everybody expected the probe to die a few hours after the malfunction with its propulsion system. This valuable experience will help other companies, in addition to Astrobotic, keep their vehicles alive in the future if they experience any problems with their propulsion systems, and it also may lead to the introduction of redundancy tanks, backup propulsion systems, that sort of thing to be implemented on future probes to keep this from happening again. It is often said that you learn more from your failures than you do from your successes, and in this particular case, I think that Astrobotic has learned a great deal, and this, in my opinion, will undoubtedly lead to a successful Griffin mission coming up in less than a year. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, please subscribe. It's incredibly important to the future of my channel. And I'd also like to thank the six new Patreon members who have joined since the beginning of the year. If you would like to join on Patreon as well, well, all the details are in the description. And in the meantime, stay angry about space. <laughs>